Hi everybody, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be covering Man-Thing. He made his very first appearance in Savage Tales, issue number one, that was released in May of 1971. His real name is Dr. Theodore Salas, AKA Ted. And while in his Man-Thing form, he stands at least seven feet tall and weighs around 507 pounds, although this height and weight can be variable. Also having bulbous red eyes and no hair, although he is covered in greenish vegetation, some of which is likely grass, which mimics hair-like appendages. Now, Man-Thing is an extremely powerful humanoid being that's composed of vegetation, having moderate to vast superhuman strength, depending on various factors in the environment around him, as well as having vast superhuman durability, basically being immune to any physical attack due to the malleability and permeability of his body. Matter of fact, these two traits allow him to change the form of his body, having low-level shape-shifting abilities that allow him to make things like weapons from his bark-like appendages, which is further boosted by his chlorokinesis, being able to control and manipulate any plant life around him. Now, he can also use this ability to regenerate or reconstitute his body from the same plants, particularly the plant life found in swamps. If this wasn't enough, Man-Thing's connection to the massive energies from the nexus of all realities gives him the ability to teleport himself and others between different locations and even other dimensions. And it's also worth noting that although for the most part Man-Thing has never been able to speak, more recently he's been given the ability to speak the universal language of Excelsior, which allows every sentient being to understand what he's saying in a way, tone, and accent that's appropriate for them. And he also has an extremely powerful burning touch, but I'll touch on that later. The only glaring weakness that Man-Thing seems to have is that if he's removed from a swampy environment for too long, he'll gradually weaken until he reaches a point that he goes into dormancy. Now, originally Dr. Salas was a talented biochemistry professor at Empire State University, who was eventually recruited to work as a scientist for the US military. He worked on a project to create a serum that would let soldiers resist biochemical warfare. And although his serum would eventually be deemed unusable due to its severe side effects, he would later use his research as a foundation for a new Captain America 2.0 project. Working with Kurt Connors, AKA the Lizard, to try to recreate the lost super soldier serum. But while working on this, he would be betrayed by the think tank known as AIM, who wanted to take his research for themselves. And fearing that his work would fall into the wrong hands, Salas would destroy his notes, inject himself with the only sample of his new serum, and would flee. But as he was being chased away from his facility, he would crash his car into the swampland surrounding his lab, which seemingly took his life. However, unknown to him, the area around his lab was close to the nexus of all realities, which is a mystical gateway that links all the different dimensions of existence. For whatever reason, Salas' experimental serum, combined with the ambient mystical energies of the Nexus, causing the plant life of the swamp to consume his near lifeless body and reconstitute him as the mindless, shambling beast, which we know as Man-Thing. This new, powerful being doesn't have a typical intellect or consciousness like other humans do, instead acting more empathically on instinct depending on his surroundings. He now seems more mindless and typically only reacts to the emotions of those around him, with the emotion of fear causing Man-Thing extreme pain, which in turn will lead him to travel sometimes great distances from his swampy home to put an end to any source of the fear that causes him distress. And this happens to be unfortunate for any of the evil, fearful souls that he comes across because a particular quirk of his chemistry makes his body give off an extremely powerful, almost sulfuric acid-like burn to any fearful being that touches him. Man-Thing would go on to have many different adventures over the years, with one of his notable appearances being during the Dark Rain event, wherein Ares actually cut him in half and captured him. Although soon after this, we'd see him living underground in Manhattan alongside the Legion of Monsters, 
We'd later see Hank Pym studying him while he was confined at the Raft facility, with Hank actually figuring out a way to use Man-Thing's connection to the Nexus to teleport Luke Cage's Thunderbolts team all over the world. But of course, Man-Thing's mindlessness and ability to teleport makes it hard to pin him down for very long. And we'd later see him have a major appearance during the Fear Itself event, with Howard the Duck actually having to form a powerful Fearsome Four team to stop Man-Thing's rampaging due to the fear that was prominent in the world at that time. We'd even go on to see Man-Thing temporarily used by S.H.I.E.L.D. and it even make an appearance in the Phoenix Force related White Hot Room. Now, due to his powers and abilities and his influence on the Marvel Universe, for my 1 to 10 rating, I'll give Man-Thing a rating of 9, which is an epic rating. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you next time. Be sure to like, subscribe, and join the new Sage.